Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sistrino back to set you up for another exit interview here on our channel. We are going to be talking with the latest player out of the game like we do every Thursday this week. It's Banu, somebody we got to know very well during the first seven hours of Survivor 46. We're going to hear all about his journey on Survivor in just a moment when he joins us for that. So hope you enjoy my exit interview with Banu. All right, everybody, we're here with the man who didn't win the million dollars, but won a million hearts. It's Banu. Banu, how are you? Rob. <laughs> Namaste. I'm doing well. How are Namaste you? Namaste to you too, Banu. Um, okay. How are you holding up after a very emotional time on Survivor? I'm really doing well. Rob, last night after my vote off, I got a message from a fan uh, saying that her daughter, who's seven year old, yeah. turned to her and said, Mom, why are they voting Banu off? He doesn't want million dollars. He won million hearts. And she texted me and saying that Banu, this, you know, my daughter just said this. What a big compliment and what a big accomplishment. A seven year old saying that after yeah. looking my vote off episode. Rob, I won. <laughs> yeah, Bonnie, I, I'm telling you, can I tell you, can I share with you? I got a text from my mom this morning who watches the show and uh, she said, wow, what a show last night. Please give my best wishes to a lovely man with a great story. So happy he saved his best for last. Namaste. That was from my mom texted that to me this morning. Thank you, mom, so much. <laughs> Your love yeah. means a lot to me. Yeah. So you doubt you touched people, Banu. Uh, what does that mean for you? Rob, um, and that's what I envisioned doing. Um, I grew up on streets, Rob, and you've known, you've seen my story. I grew yeah. up on streets. It's only 10 years ago I moved to the United States. I grew up in poverty on the streets, ta under tatch roofs. When it used to rain, it used to pour. I know, I've seen it all. Money, I know the value of money. <laughs> Are you telling yeah. someone who grew up in poverty until the last, you know, 10 or 11 years ago? I know the real value of money. But for me, that's not the end all be all. Mm -hmm. When I meant I, I'm here to win a million hearts, I truly meant it. I want the world to see me. Yeah. And I, when I saw, as a super fan of the show, who watched from season one, from episode one to the latest episode, I've seen it all. I've seen all the greatest of the greats to play. And you are one of them on the show. I've seen you all. But when I envisioned Banu playing on Survivor, I was like, you know, no, I'm going to bring the Banu element to it. Yeah. I want, I want to, because when, when people see like that seven year old, when, when she saw me and when she got moved, that's what I want to do because Rob, I'm carrying my whole nation. India is watching. Two billion plus populations watching Banu. Queer people are looking yeah. for me. I mean, people Survivor of color would love those ratings. People, people of color, pe queer people, people who has English as a second language, all and so many other things, and disabled people of disability, they're all looking. And what am I giving them? You know, if I can do it, if I can come from that to this, you can you guys can do it too. Winning a million dollars, uh, you know, is, is not the end all be all. Yeah. You got to be right. a good person. So, Banu, so I know that you are a super fan of the show, that when you came into the game, was this how you imagined your experience might go? Or did you think that you would be able to play the game and deceive people a little bit more? Rob, when I, when I started the game, I know I have it in my to just like go and, you know, I can, I can play the game. As I said, I'm a super fan. Jeff Probst is my guru. I know. That man from the TV screen motivated me when I was going through tough times in my life, watching Jeff Probst, watching Survivor as a super fan. I was like, I need to dig deep. I, I shouldn't like let this one thing pull me down. So I know how the game works. I know how the mechanics I went in saying that I would do what thousands of people have done on the show. But something in me clicked and I'm like, you know what? No, 
maybe let's try this because there's no one way of playing survivor and Rob, you know, it, yeah. you're a past consistent. You've been, you've been on several of the seasons, you know, it, there is no Not one seven. way. <laughs> Only two. Um, no, no, several, uh, you know, few, few, I few seasons. I got it. Yeah. Um, so you know how the show is and there's, there's no one way of playing this. So I was like, let me play this differently. Um, and did I fail? But I read a code, uh, Rob, you are not a failure if you have tried. I've tried. Yeah. I've tried something different. Okay. Well, Banu, so tell me a little bit about your thinking when, okay, we saw that you got the news from Jeff that Randon was coming out of the game. And then you told Q and Tiffany about what happened on the journey. Why did you choose that moment to tell them what had happened? Oh my God, no one asked me this question. Thank you so much for asking. The reason why I want, I came out to, to Q and Tiffany at that moment is because what if day eight, some, we have a challenge and someone goes on a journey and they would find out from the other tribes that Banu said this. Instead of that, I want to be like straight up with them and say like, guys, you know, I went on this journey and I said this, but I'm being honest with you and say, and I'm, 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 you know, coming out to you all about this because I want you all to trust me. I want to play the game with you because I'm on the out. I just like, I, I was just like, so, you know, I, I, I just like vent out, but if you trust me and if you just like loop me in, I will be your ride or die. And you know me, I'm sincere, I'm hardworking, I'm, I'm giving 100% in the challenges so you can trust me. And that's, that's what it is. I don't want them to find out from someone else. I know the super fans will be like, why is he like selling all? But the re main reason is my, my strategy. It's like, I don't want them to find from someone else, let them find, get it from the horse's mouth. Yeah. But it, it, it backfired. I thought like they're gonna like, you know, okay, we hear you. Why did you say that? You know, ask me more mm -hmm. questions and probably grill me, slap me if you want me to, but just like, <laughs> don't slap. play with me. Yeah. But just like, you know, include me and just like work with me Yeah. because you know, you know, um, you know, Banu. Yeah. Um, so that's what it is. So Banu, was any part of you trying to play up more the idea of like, Hey, I like, tell me what to do, shape me. Like I'll, I'll do whatever you want. Show me, show me what to do. Or was that sincere on your part? Well, they've seen, seen me and they were like, okay, we're going to coach you on how to talk. I don't, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was playing with, you know, I'm, I was like going, going with them because I don't want to be like, oh, no, I, want, I know how to play the game uh, because, you know, so I, I'm like, okay, you, you want to coach me? I was just, I'm, I, I'm being humble because I know how to be humble because I'm from the humble beginnings. So yes. I'm just like, okay, you, if you want to be that, that person who's like, you know, oh, I'm going to teach you how to play Survivor. Yes, sir. I'm going to listen to you. And that's what it is. It's, it's, it's another, you could say the strategy because I don't want to be like, you know, now what will you teach me? Mm -hmm. I've, I have the, the, the greatest to teach me. Uh, yeah. So, so when Q said to you, okay, I'll be the Boston Rob and you'll be my Philip. Did you take any offense to that? No, not at all. Not at all. Be the Boston Rob, be the Philip, get me to the merge and then see me. I will just like <laughs> in the game because yeah. Rob, one thing, um, the fans also should know is that I had 10 shoulder dislocations. Yes. Few months before the show started filming, I had a major shoulder surgery. You've seen the show, the four episodes. I was next to Q, who's a professional player. I was giving it my all. In fact, I was doing, you know, good. Yeah. You know, the gecko challenge, the swimming, the you name it, I did it all. I never once, you never see me complaining about my shoulder pain or about the rain or this or that. No, I love this game so much. This game means a lot to me. Yeah. I was giving it my all pain. No food. No sleep. I didn't sleep for nine days to be honest with you. Okay. Not even. Yeah. I didn't sleep. I didn't eat, but I never complain about that. And I was giving it my 100% in every challenge. Why we're losing. You would ask Rob, because there is lack of communication within the tribe, lack of coordination and a pinch of our, like a little bit of an empathy. Like when we lose, I'm like, Hey, 
it's okay. Let's sit and talk. Calm ourselves down. Let's sit and talk as a, as a, as a tribe, as a family. Yes. That's what's missing. Okay. You had told Mike Bloom in going into the game that your superpower was that you can read people especially well. Did you feel like that you were able to tap into that when you were out there playing the game? Absolutely. Rob, the best part about the superpower I, you know, given to me is the childhood trauma I've gone through as a, as a, as a kid, I've gone through sexual abuse for many years, physical abuse, verbal and emotional abuse, being on the streets, going, someone who has gone through childhood trauma, the superpower is when I see someone, I can tell whether the person is good or bad, but the biggest challenge, Rob, is the communication piece, because that's where I struggle. I know that person is good or bad, but how do I communicate and, and convince people that, you know, I, I know that, but I, I want you to know, I've been trying, I've tried. But again, as I said, like um, English being my second language and not being a native speaker and not understanding a subtle expressions, that's where it got hit. That's where it got hit. So we saw that Q and Tiffany and Kenzie were working on, okay, if we get to the merge with Banu, we have to, okay, train him and make sure that he's going to stay with us. If you made it to the merge, were you planning to stick with the people from Yanu or would you have tried to go out and work with uh, people from the other tribes? It depends. It depends because I want to see if, 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 if people who, for example, like whoever wants to keep me in the game, had they kept me and they've shown that they are like, they want to work with me and all of that. Yes. Why not? I always believe in giving people the benefit of the doubt. I always believed in that. So had they done that, I would have, I guess. Mm -hmm. But if, if I feel like, no, they're again, like, you know, into, into the merge, they're trying to like, you know, vote me off or something, then um, I would have played it differently. But get me to the merge. <laughs> mm -hmm. We saw that you were uh, very upset with things uh, that were said to you by the tribe that do you feel like were, were there worse things that people said to you when during your time at Yanu or that we saw probably the worst of what they said to you? I'm not going to talk about my family. Okay. <laughs> it's going to live you know, with us, um, but it's up to the, the fans interpretation. But Rob, um, one thing I want to say is that me um, yelling Jess's name is something which I took it to heart. Uh, yes. And I apologize to Jess. Jess is like my sister. She's my best friend. We love each other. And I want to, I'm saying this because I want to apologize to Jess's fans that if I been if yelling at Jess, um, I'm so sorry. I hope you, you have it in your heart to forgive me. She spoke very uh, highly of you when she was here a couple of weeks ago. So I, I, I don't think you need to worry about that. Banu, okay, so you have the million hearts now. What's next for you, Banu? Make more million hearts. Okay. <laughs> it, it shouldn't stop at a million. Uh, the goal is to get to a million hearts and then go there. I don't know. God has given me um, CBS, the survivor team, uh, Jeff Probes, they've all given me this incredible opportunity and yeah. I need to take this opportunity given to me to do something good. Okay. And I would, I would continue to do that and, uh, live the way I envision my, you know, to live my life. And, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Banu, thank you for, uh, being, you know, such a great inspiration. Appreciate you making some time to talk with us and good luck with, uh, making even more hearts. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Thanks to your mom, too. Send yes, my love I will, to her. I will, I'll send her this. Okay. Thank you, Banu. Thank you. Bye. All right, everybody. There you have it. There's Banu. And again, I think that Banu, such a inspirational figure. I totally understand why some people felt like, boy, we got a lot of Banu. Banu did not ask for supersized episodes, did not ask to be on a tribe that got shown so much. So understand if it was a lot of Banu, but it wasn't his fault. He didn't edit the shows this way. He just went out there and had his experience. I appreciate him coming on and talking about it here with us on the podcast. If you enjoyed the exit interview, once again, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. I always am reading what you have to say. Please give us a like and hit subscribe if you'd like more from Rob as a podcast. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.